After a big weekend, Lexi has the latest entertainment news for us. Lexi? Thanks, Danny. If you thought the commercial featuring longtime rivals David Letterman and Jay Leno sitting within arm's length of each other was the most shocking of Sunday night Super Bowl ads, imagine if Conan O'Brien had appeared in it, too. As it turns out, if Letterman had gotten his wish, that third member of the recent bizarre late-night television triangle would have joined them. Letterman's team had the idea of putting the three late-night hosts together for the Super Bowl spot and for his show. And sensing the comedic opportunity, Leno didn't hesitate. O'Brien's team never fully rejected the idea, but according to long-term Letterman producer Rob Burnett, it was never close to happening. Jamie Lynn Spears and boyfriend Casey Aldridge have split. The former Nickelodeon star is now moving on in a new relationship with businessman James Watson. Spears moved out of the Liberty, Mississippi house she shared with Aldridge and their 19-month-old daughter Maddie about six weeks ago and is now living with her mother Lynn. Spears, who is 18, has recently started dating Watson, who is 28, and owns a uh, multimedia company close to Kentwood, Louisiana. She already wrote two New York Times bestsellers, and soon, Kate Gosselin could have a third on her hands. The reality star is scheduled to release I Just Want You to Know, letters to my kids on love, faith, and family on April 13th. The personal book will feature prayers, experts, from her journal and eight individual letters addressed to each one of her children. In addition to the book, Gosselin is also in production on a new television show for TLC. Ellen DeGeneres makes her much anticipate, anticipated debut on American Idol tonight, shaking up the dynamics on the show's judging panel and auditioning her own talents for the biggest TV audience in the United States. The arrival of the popular talk show host and comic is expected to boost viewership on the Fox Television Network's Aging Singing Contest, now in its ninth season and facing challenges to its coveted spot as the number one show on U.S. TV. The biggest question is, can Ellen get viewers to stay? Speaking of American Idol, Howard Stern told his satellite radio listeners on Monday that he is considering leaving Sirius and radio altogether to become a judge on American Idol. Stern confirmed a report that Fox is interested in hiring the Sirius shock jock to replace Simon Cowell on the reality show. Stern said, quote, there's not a better job on the planet than judging that karaoke contest. Sunday night Super Bowl and Super Bowl commercial fest was kind of sort of popular, all right. The New Orleans Saints feel-good upending of the favored Indianapolis Colts averaged a record-smashing 106.5 million viewers, making the game the most-watched Super Bowl anything ever in TV history. As for important stuff, you know, the ads, on the winning team was Google's swoon-worthy Paris love story, Intel's Jeffrey the Robot, and Bud Light's amazing use of autotone, and Letterman and Leno surprised 10 seconds of bonding with Oprah. The best in show title, though, had to be the Snickers commercial with Betty White. It was everything a Super Bowl ad should be. Funny, a little shocking, and it got us talking. Lil Wayne got the most out of Super Bowl weekend, spending two days working around the clock and enjoying the big game on Sunday before having to report for his jail sentence today. According to a source close to his camp, Weezy shot around 10 videos over the weekend, five on Friday and five on Saturday. The, producers were rapid, the productions were rapid fire, with Lil Wayne shooting some videos in front of a green screen and some on location. Lil Wayne, easily the hardest working MC in hip hop, will have his career come to a screeching halt when a Manhattan judge formally sentences the rapper to a one year prison term. The move is the final process in the case, which dates back to July 2007 when Lil Wayne was arrested for gun possession in New York following his first headlining concert in the Big Apple. The last person to see Michael Jackson alive has been charged with involuntary manslaughter in the King of Pop's death, ending months of speculation of, ling of legal wrangling. Prosecutors announced the charge Monday against Dr. Conrad Murray, a Houston cardiologist who was with Jackson when he died June 25th. He faces up to four years in prison if convicted. Murray pleaded not guilty to the charges. Bail was set at $75,000, and the doctor is expected back in court in April.
Announced yesterday, Grammy nominee Drake will embark on his first solo tour of the U.S. The Young Money MC will headline 25 cities beginning April 6th and will be implementing an eco-friendly policy throughout the tour. The Away From Home tour will stop at 15 college campuses along the way, including Penn State, Michigan State, and University of Central Florida. The closest location for Iowa State students to attend the concert would be the University of Missouri in Kansas City on April 26th. And that's the latest entertainment news. After the break, we'll have Matt's weather forecast. Keep it here on Newswatch 18. Now, most of us ISU students celebrated spring break this past week in different locations, and some of us were even on a popular game show. Tyler Ronnie is here with us, who made an appearance this spring break on The Price is Right. Welcome, Tyler. Oh, thank you very much. Let me just say, it's an honor to be on Newswatch. Big fan, big fan. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I have a couple questions for you. All right. How did you get onto the game show? Were there auditions, or did you have to wait in line? What was that process it was, like? It was a very long process, and it's a good thing that we read into it beforehand because we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. There was a lot of waiting. Oh, here, here's the shirt, by the way, the Price is Right weather team. There we are. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, it was a long wait, and we got priority numbers based on where we were in line, and we were about 27th in line or so. The four of us were. So okay. Went with your weather guy, Matt Hoffman. Anyway, he was there. No, anyway, but um, no, and so what the big, how they pick the contestants is based on these interviews that they give. They give like quick little 30 to one minute interviews, 30 seconds to one minute interviews. Mm -hmm. And so the lady was really cool. The lady just asked, you know, she liked our shirts and was like, oh, where, where are you guys from? And we told her that we were studying meteorology at Iowa State and she was really cool. And honestly, I didn't think anything of it because that's how they pick the contestants and they pick nine people out of the 300 some people that were there. Wow. So, Wow, that's I had no a lot idea. of people. Well, <laughs> so you all got into the studio. Everyone's wearing their name tag. Yep. Now, when they called your name out, what went through your mind at the time? I was freaking out. I didn't think it was going to actually happen. And honestly, it was like a dream come true just being there. I've been a big fan of the show since I was young. My mom got me to watch it ever since I was little. So big fan. Uh, so I was freaking out. It's going to be really funny on TV because I'm, I'm just jumping up and down, freaking out. I'm high-fiving my friends that were there with me, including Matt Hoffman, another shout-out. Uh, but nonetheless, no, really cool. I was beyond excited. I didn't even know what to think at the time. It was really cool. So, right. Well, yeah. once your name was announced and you got down to the contestants' row, what was it like to be so up close and personal with the host? What was that really like? Really cool. And what was ironic, actually, was before that, uh, when I got called down, uh, in between commercials, when they're taking down the games and setting up new prizes, mm -hmm. uh, Drew Carey and Rich Fields, the announcer, would talk to the audience. And okay. Drew noticed our shirts and made us stand up. And, like, honestly, during that commercial, he was just talking to the four of us. And Rich Fields loved our shirts, too, because, I mean, he used to be a meteorologist, so that's why we made these shirts. Oh, I see. Uh, but still, no, really cool, very friendly. They were really cool and stuff, so... Cool. Yeah, really neat. Well, once you were down there and um, you guys were bidding on stuff, um, did you get to win anything? Like, did you get to go up to the <laughs> stage and not, get anything like I, that? Unfortunately not. I got called down second to last, which means oh. that I only got to bid twice. And I was, I was kind of close both times, but, and then I, I was that guy on the last prize and bid a dollar over somebody, so I don't think oh, he was very no. happy. But, no, st you know what, though, honestly, it was still really cool just to be called to come on down. I did win consolation prizes, though. Cool. So that's kind of neat. So you do course. have some memory to bring back to. In 90 games. days, I got my paperwork. So. Wow, <laughs> wow. Well, what made you decide to go to the show? Big fan. Want to do it all my life. Well, you can only be 18 to do it, so I was like, I, we had to go. All so. right. Well, that sounds great. Sounds like a great <laughs> spring break. Anyway, we will be right back with all of the sports and weather. Keep it here. You're watching News Watch.